So welcome back. I'm going to do part two of um, where my channel is going wrong and what I'm going to do about it. So this time I won't be quite as negative. I'll just talk about <clears throat> how I can improve it. Um, I did briefly touch on the fact that, you know, when I've got competitors, I, I start to get a little bit um, disheartened because you see how they're skyrocketing. And you think, oh dear, where am I going wrong? So yeah, I had a good look at my statistics and things. I can see where the audience drops off and I can see that quite a lot of people um, are watching the videos but they're not subscribers. So um, again, going in the analytics, it shows that um, a certain percentage are watching. So maybe I'm on your favorites or something that you haven't actually subscribed. So that's another thing. So I'm gonna continue on this video today talking about why my channel's not growing. And I think, um, yeah, it was probably a bit harsh on some of the things I was talking about before, but I think I'll try and cover today where I might be going wrong. And if you're a YouTuber and you've got a small channel and it's just not growing, well, let's listen and talk to each other, you know, from from a, a non-professional um, video about why your channel's not growing. Because if you see all those other ones, like Think Media and who else would I put on there? Think Media, VidIQ, Nick Nimmin, that's just to name a few. When they talk about why, strategies for why your channel's not growing, they're very, very professionally done. And you expect professionalism. This is just little on me, a little YouTuber and my opinions. So um, I think it will be quite um, interesting to listen to what I have to say as well from my own um, perspective. So my channel as you know is lifestyle, you know a bit of beauty, makeup, that sort of thing and also the whippets and I know I covered that before but I think I'll just talk about like I said where I've gone wrong and again just using iMovie and not being very professional in my editing. I feel I try to be a professional and I use all the tools I've got but I haven't brought like the program Final Cut Pro. I thought I'd wait till I get to a thousand subscribers and I'll treat myself to that one. So I think what I need to do is, so welcome back. I'm gonna do part two of the video from the day before talking about why my small YouTube channel isn't growing. I've had a few days to think about it and I actually have quite a few views. So I was pleased with that. So it does resonate with some of you. So I thought I'd just um, catch up and talk a little bit more about it. Now I know I've already run down the, two, the YouTubers who I think uh, you know pay for subscribers and, and whatnot and it really does happen because I know you can go on websites to buy subscribers so I was a bit disheartened because I thought I'm doing my best and I'm not cheating anybody I'm not um, being dishonest everything is literally as you see what you see is what you get so I'm feeling when I see these big channels suddenly grow um, just by observation and like I said through vidIQ then you sort of think well what's the point but you know if you go onto a channel you want to see the real thing you know I've got my ring light on today so hopefully it's not too bright but I am in my bedroom in, or my makeup room I should call it I am just talking with this camera you know and um, just to you and just talking about making it real <laughs> And yeah, I think if I was to change it all, um, I, I've got a good camera. It's a Canon G5X, that's the one I'm using at the moment. What I've done, what I've found, um, just to increase the views, I did find if I go on some shorts and actually um, do a quick shorts, that actually boosts up the um, channel just a little bit and it just, it puts it out there a bit more. So what advice I would give is um, have a go with shorts because it really does um, the, the channel, the, the video go out to a lot more people so you do get quite a few views and and then once they see you on the shorts they might jump onto your channel and hit the subscribe button. So that's a good thing. The other thing I learned the other day was, um, I think I learned it from Think Media. Um, I think it's Nolan Malt, he's really good on Think Media. Uh, he's just one of the presenters on there and do the channels. He he says if you if you go on your YouTube um, icon on your phone, you've got to do it on your phone, and then you select your videos. When you hit your videos, you can select any video, and you can and it gives you a remix button. And what you do with that, you hit that button, and then you can do up to sixty seconds of a clip of a video. And I actually have had done a few of those already, and even on this is going to be on there as well. And you just um, you can just add a little timeline of part of your video. It's almost like a little advert before you watch the video. So that's another good tip that I've learned as well. So that's another thing to boost your views. So you can just do a snippet of it. And sometimes, even when I'm out, I've done a shorts because like I did one on the shoes. I was so excited about these shoes. I thought, I want to share it with everyone. So I did the shorts and that worked out well. So those are two tips for you if you want to try and boost your, your views. Um, again, don't be disheartened by the, your competitors because you know you are your own channel. Um, 
And again, again, with narrowing down the niches, you just need to um, really focus in more. Dig into your analytics and just see what videos are going well and what um, what works and what doesn't, what gets the views and what doesn't. And also on specific videos, you go into analytics and you go the view retention, and then you just see how long you, the viewer's retention is. You know how long they will stay focused on what you're talking about. So when I did this last video, my, um, my viewers were up and um, the viewer retention was up a little bit as well. So I got all the little green ticks to say, yeah, this is what they're interested in. So I thought, well, that's not a bad thing. Maybe I can start talking about how to grow your channel just from you know a non-professional type of video, which is me. Um, so I noticed that people were watching it. I think the average was about three minutes, but it was a 16 minute video, but three minutes adds to your viewing time. So that was a good thing as well. So yeah, really have a look at your analytics. Now, the way I'm talking and the way professional YouTubers talk, when they're showing this sort of stuff, they show you on the video of the graph and show you all their bits and pieces. I'm not that good at doing all that sort of stuff so I'm literally just telling you how it is um, I did talk about the focusing when I'm doing like the makeup ones I just thought if you look at a nice close-up and I'll do it again go nice and close um, even though the ring light is shining on my face you need to see exactly what your face looks like your skin looks like if you're doing a makeup video there's no point in having such a bright light that we can't see the true colors or the, the imperfections on your face so that does bother me and I'm sure a lot of you out there feel the same that you see it and you think well you're not showing us a true you know you're not trying to show us your true colors so, and then when I do see videos that actually do that I actually make comments about it and say oh the great the lighting's really great so you might see my name pop up a few times because I I think they've gone through all that effort you can see very clearly and it's very much appreciated so yes we do that um what else did I do I did try doing some split screens as well when I was doing a um, try on haul that kind of worked but that was a lot of effort too so I'm quite happy if you are too just to hold the camera up and talk while I'm looking at it I try not to be too shaky but you know again you're getting it real you're not having a voiceover you're just I literally am just ad lib it's like this is how it is so I just think it just sounds honest and you know real because some of the some of the videos are so professionally done that you know it's almost like you're watching a telly channel you know like a telemarketing channel um but you know when you want the real real you get the real real so yeah so I'm still going to probably hold the camera up and you know walk along with it like that what else can I talk about Okay, I've had another thought. Now, a lot of the beauty channels as well, they're always, don't you, I'll tell you what, don't you get fed up with them going, my faves and fouls of January, February, March, whatever. Don't you get sick of seeing that? It's so predictable. My faves and fouls, my faves and fouls. <laughs> just, just, I know they're all picking the same topic that everyone else will be picking for, for the search, in the search engine is going to say my favourite and fouls. But, you know, I tell you what, for us viewers, um, it gets really sickening seeing it because we know you're only going to test them for a few days. They're not really your favourites because you're always going to do more products. So that is really quite annoying, you know. You're not going to try all this stuff out. You just buy it and then, you know, then you do a little review. You're not even following up. So that does, that's a, that's a pet hate of mine is the faves and fouls. You know, and often we would just skip through that anyway. They're going to order this product. They're going to use it. They're not going to use it again, but then they're going to say, oh, it's my favourite and fouls. And make sure you buy it. You know, I brought a Maybelline blinking concealer thing the other day because I thought, oh, I saw them all using it. I really can't see the point in using that one. It's the Maybelline one. I'll show you it to you. Just the Maybelline Age Rewind. I was watching someone on that. I thought, oh, I'm going to give that a go. It's nice. It's nothing special. And I got sucked in with Urban Decay, this uh, eye primer. That works fine. But why did I buy that? I didn't need that. Still loving the True Match anyway. And um, that works just as well. And um, it's just so fake. So fake. You know, I know they, they need to promote their stuff because they're obviously getting products sent to them and they need to talk about them but it's just the way they I've got some products here it's the way they hold them up and go this is such and such and this is such and such you like you know you're not like a real person you just you just fake just don't be so fake just say I got this my make this is how it should be right this is how I think the beauty channels should be and I'm being serious now okay I'll do two versions of it okay I'm gonna give you an example of how I feel like people are so damn fake and, and an honest review of products this is just my observation and um, which irks me so much because they might as well be on a t TV TVSN channel you know those um, uh, telemarketing channels all right here's an example first of all this is a youtuber 
the talk really slow, bugs the hell out of me, looks up in the corner of her eye and just goes and, and just laughs. It's just bizarre. I'm not going to tell you who she is. But anyway, this is how she would do this, okay? Right, here we go. This is a Maybelline Age Rewind. Perfect for the mature skin. You just dab it on there and wipe it over. And... <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. I really recommend it. That's one example, okay? This is how it really should be, okay? Say the product, say this product is sent to me and I'm going to review it. I'm not going to talk like that at all. Okay, this is how it should be. I brought this Rewind Maybelline Age Rewind the other day. It's really good for my skin. You just literally dab it on and wipe it on and so on and so on. You'll do a bit more research about it. But that's all you need to do. You just need to say it like that. You don't need to give us all this bullshit. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so this, so that. You might as well be on telly for that. This is YouTube. Make it real. This is real, okay? <laughs> you can even do it with another product. I've got this True Match. I love the True Match. It's a brilliant colour. I'm using a beige brown or well, beige blonde or something. And it cost me $14.99 in the sale. Another YouTuber would say, well, I've got this. This is $14.99. In fact, they don't even tell you the price. They'll say, I'll, oh, wait, wait till I get to that bit. This is the best makeup. Look, people who know me know I don't talk like that. So why do it on bloody YouTube? And you know what else bugs me? <laughs> I'm in a buggy mood. Listed below. Listed below. We know it's listed below. You don't need to put your fingers like that and show us it. You know, is it, I tell you what, the psychology behind that is if you go like that, you're going to be looking and it's going to make your attention draw down. It's just, you notice it. If you look at other people, I've listed it in the description box below. We know where to find it. We know what it is. You don't need to point. <gasps> okay. I'm talking about being real. There's another one as well. She did a video and she says, oh, how, to tie the how to tie your scarf in 2023. So what's different in 2022, 2021? Come on, you know, how it's just the bloody clickbait of the thumbnail, how to tie it. You know, you tie it in 2021, 22, 23, 24 even. Next year she'll do one how to tie it in 24. It's obviously changed. Oh, that's another pet hate. <laughs> I think I should call this channel, uh, this video, uh, My Pet Hates of YouTube. Yeah, they're just so damn predictable, aren't they? You know, And then it just puts you off. You just see it over and over again. Um, Foundation Friday. Foundation Friday. Just because it sounds like an F, it's just like, oh yeah, that's a catchy little thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Let's just keep it real, hey? Let's just have some real stuff going on. Real talk for real YouTubers. Um, when I do a makeup video, um, I like to be able to see a real close-up of what the application looks like. Again, I talked about it the other day and I find people just have this, this bright. I'll show you. They'll talk maybe like that bright and you can't see. It looks like you've got perfect skin there, but really deep down, oh, that's what it's really like. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're putting it on already just to show you that it's just filtered. You know, it's all filtered. It's wrong. Oh, dear. We're, you know, I'm 58 and we're trying, I'm not competing with the younger makeup people. I do know that my skin's different to how they present their self and they're trying to show you that, you know, smudge out your little blurry lines and everything. We use this product, that product, etc. It will do the job. You know, their skin's not like mine anymore, you know, so I have to look at dry skin products, but I'm not going to go searching and searching. I'm just going to use what works for my skin. And then they promote all this fancy dermatology skin creams, oh boy, whatever, our drunk elephant, all that sort of stuff. I tell you what, Nivea would do the job as well. Nivea is thick, it can get into the pores, it's a thicker one at night time, during the day it's just as well, or oil of Ule, you know, why do we have to be sucked into everything they think it's good, which is very expensive. You know, I'm going to go for what my skin works for. On all our older ones, we look at the, the, the products that they're selling, you think, oh, I'm going to try that. But we are older, you know, we've got to look after our skin a little bit different. Um, anyway, come back to the YouTube channel. <laughs> um, yeah, you look on these videos, you go on your search engine and you find why isn't my channel growing or ways to, you know. And the, the other thing is how to start a YouTube channel in 2023. What's the difference in the year? It just sounds better. It's a clickbait for checking out what's new in 2023. And you think, wow, you know, just check on a channel, just go, you know, how to improve your channel it doesn't mean because it's 2023 it's brilliant there's a new wave of it so um yeah all the professional ones they they 
they make it seem so good. It's nothing we don't already know. You either you really a real person or you're not. You know, you just you're just gonna say it as it is, like I am, or you're not. You just if you if you make it too posh and fancy, you just lose the 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 viewer because it's just too scripted. That's another word, scripted. <sighs> okay, so what I'm trying to say is make it real. Just be yourself if you want to have a good channel. And if you want to just look at the, the big YouTubers who make it really professional, go ahead. But if you just want to watch a channel that's just normal, just watch mine. <laughs> All right, bye.